Zion Lutheran Church of Wilton, Iowa, invite you to worship with them. We are your neighbors and friends in Christ. Morning. morning. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. What a joy it is to know that our salvation is secure through our Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for us. This morning we're using the order of Matins, page 219, uh, with the spoken liturgy. Uh, the two hymns have specific verses that we will sing, uh, so please note those. Let us arise for worship. O Lord, open my lips. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ. Alleluia. The Lord has gathered us in the true faith. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise unto him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. The deep places of the earth are in his hand. The strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord has gathered us in the true faith. O oh, come, let us worship him. Psalm 33. Shout for joy in the Lord, O you righteous. Praise befits the upright. Sing to him a new song. Play skillfully on the strings with loud shouts. He loves righteousness and justice. The earth is full of the steadfast love of the Lord. He gathers the waters of the sea as a heap. He puts the deeps in storehouses. For he spoke, and it came to be. He commanded, and it stood firm. The Lord brings the counsel of the nations to nothing. He frustrates the plans of the people. The Lord is their God, and he does The counsel of the Lord stands forever. The plans of his heart to all generations.
reading for this, the seventh Sunday after Trinity, is from Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God formed the man of dust from the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living creature. And the Lord God planted a garden in Eden in the east, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground the Lord God made to spring up every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was in the midst of the garden, and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. A river flowed out of Eden to water the garden, and there it divided and became four rivers. The name of the first is the Pishon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. Delium and onyx stone are there. The name of the second river is the Gihon. It is the one that flowed around the whole land of Cush. And the name of the third river is the Tigris, which flows east of Assyria. And the fourth river is the Euphrates. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 6. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves to righteousness, leading to sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. But what fruit were you getting at the time from the things of which you are now ashamed? To the end of those things is death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves of God, the fruit you get leads to sanctification and its end eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the eighth chapter. In those days, when again a great crowd had gathered, and they had nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I have compassion on the crowd, because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And if I send them away hungry to their homes, they will faint on the way. And some of them have come from far away. And his disciples answered him, How can one feed these people with bread here in this desolate place? And he asked them, How many loaves do you have? They said, Seven. And he directed the crowd to sit down on the ground. And he took the seven loaves, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And they set them before the crowd, and they had a few small fish. And having blessed them, he said that these also should be set before them. And they ate and were satisfied. And they took up the broken pieces left over, seven baskets full. And 
there were about 4,000 people, and he sent them away. O Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus has compassion on the crowd. He doesn't want them to go away hungry and faint on the way. And so he multiplies the loaves and the fishes. And it's enough. The people are satisfied. They won't faint, and they'll make it safely home. Well, good for them. But what about us? What of this nation and people? What of our crowds who have followed Jesus not just for three days, but three years, three decades, more? Lord, we are weary, and we will faint on the way. We're weary of wars and threats and danger at home and abroad. We're weary of watching the news with stories of children being raped and murdered, of criminals on the loose of evil beyond comprehension. We are weary of growing weary, weary of caring for aged parents and needy children, more weary still of losing either to disease and death. We are weary. We need compassion. Where's that famous compassion now, Lord Jesus? Where's our miracle? Where is our rest? Where is our bread for the way? Beloved children of the Heavenly Father, take heart. He hasn't abandoned you, and he hasn't abandoned the world. The Lord Jesus is still compassionate. He still looks on your weariness, and it breaks his heart. His mercy and love still move him to action for you. And it still comes as a miracle. It still comes as bread. and it is still enough. For as humanity once fell into sin and disease and the weariness of death through eating, so our Lord Jesus Christ will bring you rest, forgiveness, and life through eating. As once humanity failed in eating the fruit of the tree of the, of the knowledge of good and evil, so also God will bring salvation to humanity by the fruit of another tree, the fruit of the better tree, the tree that does give knowledge of good and evil, the fruit of the cross. 
This is your miracle, beloved. God in the flesh died for you. Now don't let those words become commonplace to you. I know you learned them in Sunday school and you've heard them a hundred times since. But don't have contempt for them through that familiarity. God in the flesh died for you. There can be no greater miracle. For how can God die? How can the Creator become a creature? How can the Lord of the universe become a lowly Jewish carpenter and be nailed to the tree? But that is what God has done for you. That's the depth of his love for you. And that is your miracle. At least it's the first part of your miracle. For it wasn't enough that Jesus, for Jesus to die on the cross and rise for you. He wasn't content that his sacrifice remain a history book sacrifice to be discussed and, and meditated upon. His love for you moved him to connect you to his sacrifice. To deliver his sacrifice to you. And so he took bread and he blessed it with his almighty word saying, this is my body, broken for you for the forgiveness of sins. And he gave it to his apostles to distribute to you. And so that you might understand this great miracle all the more, he taught you about it in this smaller miracle of multiplying bread for thousands. In this miracle in the gospel, bread gives life and sustenance to the people on the way home. In the Lord's Supper, the bread of heaven, that is Jesus Christ himself, in his real and true body and blood, gift gives life and sustenance to those who are weary as they travel to their home with God in the resurrection on the last day. In the gospel miracle, what is so very little, just a few loaves, feeds thousands. In the Lord's Supper, by faith, we profoundly, we ponder humbly over this surpassing wonder that the bread of life is boundless, though the souls it feeds is countless. With the choicest wine of heaven, Christ's own blood to us is given. Through the power of his almighty word, Jesus feeds his church day in and day out with his body and blood. Here in this gospel uh, miracle, the Lord does the miracle, and he gives it to his apostles to distribute to the people. And so also in the Lord's Supper, the Lord's word performs the miracle as the servant of the Lord distributes to the people the miraculous bread of heaven, the Lord's Supper. This is your miracle. This is how the Lord is compassionate to you. He dies for you, he rises for you, and he feeds you with that resurrection. He puts his own living body and blood in you so that you might live forever.
so that you might not faint on the way, but come home at last in the resurrection, when your body also will be raised from the dead, just as Jesus' body is raised. Well, does that seem that it's not enough? Do you wish your miracle was a bit more flashy? Are you somewhat disappointed that all Jesus has for you is his resurrection and the Lord's Supper? Do you, do you wish for a, a few miraculous healings? A few plain old bread multiplications as well? Well, beloved, consider this. All those healings Jesus did and this bread multiplying in the gospel today, and even the raising from the dead of Jairus' daughter and Lazarus, all those miracles had an expiration date. Every person Jesus healed of blindness eventually had his eyes darkened again in death. And poor Lazarus and Jairus' daughter and the widow of Nain's son they had to die twice. If the point of being a Christian, if the goal of following Jesus was to receive such temporary relief, such transient miracles, then what would make Jesus better than the Mayo Clinic? No, beloved. You're here today because you know that all the problems of this world, all the heartache and evil, all the agony and tears, all the wars and natural disasters and illnesses, yes, even pandemics, you know that all of these are only symptoms of the real disease. You know that this world is dying in a dead place and that only the God of life can heal it. A miraculous healing here and there is just like putting a Band-Aid on a bullet wound. What you need is rebirth. What you need is death and resurrection. Not merely a fresh start, but a new creation. And that's what you receive here. That's what this place is for. This is the place where Jesus calls the crowds in so that he might have compassion on them. This is the place where God gives out eternal life. This is the place where the true problem of the world is dealt with. This is the place where death is healed. Not for a time, but for all eternity. This is the place where Jesus has promised to be with you and feed you with his word and his body and blood. This is your miracle. This is the Lord's compassion. And it's still enough. Strengthened and sustained here, you won't faint on the way. You will arrive safely at home with your Lord in heaven. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Let us arise and let us read together our canonical hymn.
We praise you and acknowledge you, O God, to be the Lord, the Father everlasting, by all the earth adored. To you, all angel powers cry aloud, the heavens sing. The cherubim and seraphim, their praises to you bring. O holy, holy, holy Lord God of Sabaoth, your majesty and glory fill the heavens and the earth. The band of the apostles in glory sing your praise. The fellowship of prophets, their deathless voices raise. The martyrs of your kingdom, a great and noble throng, sing with the holy church throughout all the world this song. O all majestic Father, your true and only Son, and Holy Spirit comforter, forever three in one. You, Christ, are King of glory, the everlasting Son, yet you, with boundless love, sought to rescue everyone. You laid aside your glory, were born of virgin's womb, were crucified for us, and were placed into a tomb. Then by your resurrection, you won for us reprieve. You opened heaven's kingdom to all who would believe. You sit in splendid glory, enthroned at God's right hand, upholding earth and heaven by forces you command. We know that you will come as our judge that final day, so help your servants you have redeemed by blood, we pray. May we with saints be numbered where praises never end, in glory everlasting, Amen, O oh Lord. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. In our prayers today, we want to re include Rebecca Zitzel and also Pastor Reinke. O God, whose never failing providence orders all things both in heaven and earth, we humbly implore you to put away from us all hurtful things and to give us those things that are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Remember, Lord, your promise to be a rock of refuge for your baptized children. Be gracious to us. Create in us humble and contrite hearts that we might always cry out to you for mercy. Fill us with your love. Grant us renewal by your Holy Spirit that we may always abide in Jesus Christ our Savior, beholding his glory in his holy word and sacraments and being made well by the same. Remember, Lord, your promise to send workers into your vineyard. Remember also all those whom you have already sent. Make your face shine on them so that through their faithful service, the eyes of those blind to your mercies may be opened to see the salvation they have in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember, Lord, our nation and its leaders. Guide them in the direction you would have them go that peace and prosperity, truth and justice, religion and piety may dwell in our land. 
Remember also those who serve in our armed forces, that they would serve with integrity and honor. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Remember, Lord, the elderly and shut in. Provide them with compassionate and loving caregivers and bless the nursing homes throughout our land. Send pastors to bring them Christ through his holy word and sacraments and sustain those who remain isolated. Remember, Lord, those who are sick, hospitalized, in treatment, undergoing surgery or recovering. Especially we remember Keith, Andy, Barbie, Barb, Shirley, Pastor Tom Parrott, Dorothy, Vernon, Rebecca, and Pastor Joshua Reimke. Comfort them with your presence, sustain their faith through your gracious promises, and bring healing to them as you will and know to be best. Through Christ our Lord, Amen. Remember, Lord, your, your promise to fill the wedding banquet of your son and his bride, the church, with guests clad in white robes. For those who have gone before us and now rest from their labors, we give you thanks and praise. Bring us with them to the day of our Lord's glorious return, that we may all receive the eternal inheritance you have prepared for us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us to the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.
to all of you. Uh, I'll give you a note that I received concerning Pastor Reimke, if you can find it. put it now. I needed to read it because it was a little involved. I knew I had that out here. I don't know, I have to give it to you on my own. Uh, let's see, maybe I put it in here. Here it is. I knew I had it. Not going that much. <laughs> yet. <laughs> um, it says, it sounds like the last weekend, Pastor Reimke went into the clinic to get checked for a sore throat and a loss of a voice. After several tests, ruling out COVID-19, strep, and mono, it was discovered that his kidney and liver numbers were very high. Further testing found that Pastor Reimke was having a reaction to his arthritis medication. Sounds like he is recovering well, his voice is returning, but his throat is still sore. So keep him in your prayers. That's why I had to read that, it's too involved. Uh, this morning we're having our uh, voters meeting Immediately after the service now, we'll be staying up here for it. Our speakers will come to the lectern and use a microphone so you can hear where you're at. I know you need to be keep spread out, spread out uh, because of the virus. Um, also, just a reminder, the uh, Eventide will be meeting in August, so make sure you read that note in your bulletin. Any other announcements today for today? If there's anyone that would not want to stay for the voters assembly, I guess you may leave at this time. Is that correct? Okay. The rest of you just hang tight. Contents and views expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this cable company or its commission.